there right away, but we've been working hard on the steps to take us there. So why don't I show you a little bit about uh, what we're doing now uh, in order to uh, develop these capabilities. This is a robot where the main capability is mobility. It's designed to work out in the real world and it has a ability to balance itself and move dynamically which is one of the key ingredients of uh, legged locomotion in people and animals. This robot was designed to carry heavy loads. It was designed for 200 kilogram and we've tested it up to 500 kilogram. Now I know many of you have heard about using drones to deliver packages to homes. Well, what about just using plain old legged robots? We've been experimenting with using legged robots to deliver packages and here we're testing by having the packages go to our employees' houses. And in the Boston area, there's a lot of different variation from house to house, so it's quite a challenge and we're doing very well. Now, if you want a robot that's going to fit in your house or your office, you need something smaller than the other ones. So for that purpose, we designed Spot. Uh, Spot is the, in, in English, is the, uh, the first ro uh, dog-like robot you hear about. And here are some of the tasks. This isn't a real house. This is a house we built inside of our laboratory in order to do testing. But it gives us a chance to show some of the capabilities. And here the ability to do mobility, sensing, perception, and intelligence lets us work in a real world uh, that is very complicated. We've also been building some robots for manipulation that have two hands and two legs and they can coordinate their hands with motion of the body in addition to being able to do locomotion on terrain. So here by using the hands and the body and the legs and the perception system, perception is very important, and some intelligence, the robot can do some tasks that might be uh, useful tasks where they transport uh, boxes in a logistics uh, situation, line them up. We've been interested in seeing if we can make these robots work as fast as humans. And so here we're showing the robot working with a human and it pretty much keeps up. It's using its perception to see the boxes. Here there's two robots working together. That first one's a little bit sloppy, uh, but you get the idea. Just because we're trying to build robots that are, have the capabilities of humans doesn't mean they need to look like humans. Here's one that has legs combined with wheels so they have more efficiency. It still has two arms and so it can manipulate. And this one's pretty strong. It lifts about 50 kilos, 100 pounds, and it can do this all day long uh, without uh, breaking a sweat. The robot also has rough terrain capability. And it loves to, uh, to show off. Now I've brought uh, one of our robots with us today. This is Spot Mini. And Seth here is uh, operating for you. Right now Seth is just driving the robot around. I'm in the way here. Uh, where he's steering it, telling it what speed and direction to go but the onboard computers are coordinating the motions of the legs so that it does walking, trotting, pacing, and other gates. One of the cool things about Leggett's robots is they're omnidirectional, so it can travel sideways in addition to forward, and it can turn in place. And of course the robot's a little bit of a show off, it does <laughs> some dynamic tasks. And even more dynamic tasks. Someone was asking about two legs. So let me tell you a little bit about Spot Mini. It's got a set of stereo cameras here. And if you look up on the screen, you can see what the robot sees. And if we switch into another mode, it'll show you what the robot's thinking. So here's a model of the world. If you can see the edge of the stage, which it's using its stereo to generate and it also shows itself in the world so it knows if it were to walk that way it would fall off the stage and it's not going to do that. It's also got another sensor back here, a LIDAR, a laser ranger, and here's the view 
uh, from the laser ranger and you can see the whole stage. We put those posts up there so it can navigate. Now we're going to show you a simulated security patrol. So Seth's going to switch it into a different mode where the robot is working completely on its own. I have to get out of the way. So Seth isn't driving anymore. This is autonomous navigation. And we've programmed it to go over in this corner and check for um, something that shouldn't be there. So it doesn't actually have a sensor in the hand, but uh, if it did, it would be looking and checking to make sure that no one had put anything there. Then it's going to go around. I think, Masa, you may have to back up a little bit, because uh, otherwise you're in the way. <laughs> uh, we don't have it detecting people yet, but it will detect this step and, uh, and go over it, we hope. So it used its stereo vision system to detect the step. Now uh, Alex is going to convert the step into an obstacle that it can't climb over. Again, I have to get out of the way. So when it does this, it's using its LiDAR to localize itself on the stage. Uh, again, we've